Welcome to episode 137 of For the Love of Guns. Now, I want you to imagine a tool that allows you to transform your AR in seconds. That's right, seconds. Maybe you want to shoot a 300 blackout, but man, you just don't want to go into the shop, yank a barrel off, do all the work of torquing a new barrel on. We're going to talk about a, a product that's absolutely amazing. It'll let you change that barrel in the field in just a matter of seconds. Now today we have Brendan Zinser from Bear City Arms. He is the mastermind behind the RS series, which allows you to do this. But before we talk to Brendan, it's time to really, really support some great companies. Falco Holsters makes great holsters by hand. They can make a holster for any gun, every budget, without sacrificing quality. And if you use the checkout code Banshee, you'll save 10%. Look, these are the holsters that I use. I absolutely love them. Check it out. This is also brought to you by Ammo Squared. Look, Ammo Squared is doing some great things with online purchasing. Go check it out because they're doing this thing. It's almost like investing in ammo. Super cool stuff. I have a link down below. You're not going to want to miss this one. Trust me. Now it's time to talk to Brandon. Brandon, tell me about your love of guns. My name is Brandon Zinsner. I'm out of Sarasota, Florida. I'm the owner of Bear City Arms, and I've created a uh, quick change barrel system for the AR-15, which allows you to change the barrel and the handguard independently of each other. So you can change calibers, and you can change out handguards, length of barrels, basically anything you want. It makes your rifle 100% modular. And that's kind of something that's interesting with your product here, because, you know, I, I, I've done a video and the audience doesn't know there's a second video that's coming out about your product. Um, and it's, it's really cool. Let me grab one of my uppers here. Um, because it really does make it modular, because, you know, when I did the first video, I had, I had it out. I was shooting 223, and less than a minute later, this was set up for 300 blackout with the same upper. I just swapped the barrel out. Correct. I've, I've made it so it fits just about anything and everything. It doesn't matter what gas block you have, even an A-frame frontside post. So basically how it works is if you've got an A-frame frontside post or a big bulky gas block, the barrel would come out first. If you have a low profile gas block, the handguard comes off first and then the barrel. So I actually call it zero limitation because you're not limited to what you have. You know, I love that. I love that zero limitation because that's what we're really looking for in our firearms these days. We're looking to see how much we can get out of them, especially the AR platform. It's, you know, we don't want, especially if you're someone like me, I don't want to be just limited to two, two, three, five, five, six. You know, I want to do 300 blackout maybe 224. I mean, there's like, what, almost 200 yeah, calibers you could shoot out of yeah, the there's AR. there's actually four different calibers you can fire with the 5.56 five, bolt. And if you wanted to change yeah. out the bolt in the barrel, you can go all the way up to a 50 Beowulf. So there's actually like 14 plus different calibers that you can fire through the AR magwell. See, and that's just, that's what's so great about this. I mean, when when Stoner came up with this design, I don't think he had any idea exactly the, the monster that was going to get un, unleashed of this of, you know, because it, it was great. You know, he came, he came out with, you know, the AR-15, you know, originally the AR-10 before, but the AR-15, Colt took it on and started manufacturing it for the M16. And then you get into the civilian market. Well, we like to tinker with stuff, right? Absolutely. I mean, it really, that's where the aftermarket comes out. And now that I can yank a barrel out, put a different barrel in, and then go, you know, if I have a tax stamp for my lower, and it's an SBR, and I don't want it to be an SBR, I can just pop off the handguard, pop, off, pop out the barrel. I could throw a 20 inch in there if I wanted to. Absolutely. Also, what I also tell everybody too, is if you have a registered pistol lower, you can change your pistol into a rifle and your rifle back into a pistol. 
which is actually a huge plus because there's so many people out there that have pistol ARs. Yeah. Another thing that I want to mention too is this actually accepts almost the entire majority of all piston drives out there. And it also will fit a suppressor up to 1.625 within the handguard itself. So, okay. I mean, there's almost nothing that this system will not work with. It's very unique. See, and that's, that's important to note because some people are running pistons. Um, I'm just, I, I don't know, I guess I'm lazy. I'm still running gas. I've always wanted a piston system, but I just never did. That's cool because, you know, we're, we're, when we look at this stuff, so, you know, this is a barrel that's set up so that way I can put it into the system. And, and for everybody that's either watching, um, and for you, those of you in the audio side, I'm sorry you can't see this, but all it is is an AR barrel. I've got my, you know, my muzzle device on, a gas block, and a gas tube. That's it. There's nothing special about this barrel at all. Thanks. It's just a standard AR barrel. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's funny because uh, when I was coming up with the idea, I didn't want to be limited to just having a low-profile gas block. There's other systems out there that only work with a low profile gas block. Yep. Also, the other systems that are out there, they're limited also because the handguard and the barrel stay together. So yes. pretty much the only thing that you're doing with those systems is you're taking it apart and you're stowing it in your backpack for easy carry. So I took it a step further and I made it to where you can actually change out calibers without having any other barrel nut to put on that <laughs> slides in between the barrel extension and also the gas block. So, See, uh, and, you know, and that's again, kind of important it, it, about your system is because you can just take the stock stuff like off the shelf, you have stock barrel, pop it in. Like you were talking about before where you have the barrel and the, and the handguard. Well, if I got to take the barrel and handguard off to stow a rifle to make it, I might as well just pop the two pins and pull my upper off, right? Absolutely. And that was a that was a big no for me. Um, another reason for the design was I wanted to be able to retrofit what everybody has already from the past 20 years ago all the way up until this point. Also, the handguards are M-Lock compatible, so... There's no problems with any of your add-ons. I'll grab I'll grab one of this. So this is a, a desert. This is the desert tan one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you have your M locks all the way around. You have your pick rail across the top. Um, and so so since we're talking about this, your handguards are titanium. Correct. Why titanium? When everybody else is doing aluminum, why did you decide on titanium? Okay, so I have a lot of uh, comments about heat so mm -hmm. titanium actually takes twice as long to heat up over aluminum so that was one of the reasons why i chose titanium and also again i wanted to be different and offer the people another choice and material so instead of just going on with the same aluminum or carbon fiber now i've introduced another product on the market and it seems that uh, a lot of people are really interested in it, in it being titanium. So this is your 12 inch, right? Correct. So basically if I have an SBR with a can on it or the cans kind of, you know, starting to get into the handguard here, this is going to take the heat from the suppressor. You know, if suppressors get hot, and if you go full auto with them, they're going to get really hot. Um, so you're, what you're saying is this is really, since this takes twice as long to heat up, we you get a little, a little more, more time. We got a little more time before we bake off our hand. Yeah. And then at the same time is since it's titanium, it's super strong. Yes. And it's very light too. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah Cause it's, cause isn't titanium something like the, I forget, I forget what the exact thing, but it's like the, it's, it's the lightest strength, uh, strength, the lightness ratio of a, of a material. Absolutely. And that's how I got away with it being able to be so thin because it's actually very thin. The wall, the walls on the hangar are very thin, but it's super. Uh, it, yeah, it's yeah. super strong. It's very strong. 
because if I take this, um, it, it's funny. I just cleaned up the bench of, of a bunch of stuff. I used to have a, a rail here. This, even though with this thing being, um, it's a little bit bigger, right? Than than some handguards, but not obnoxiously. It's not obnoxiously bigger. I mean, if I get my hand on there, and I get big paws too, it's not like it's obnoxious. I can get a good grip of this thing, right? Um, but it's also not. You know, with aluminum, you know, I, I think I have aluminum handguards that are probably heavier than this. Oh, absolutely. No doubt about it. And again, one of the reasons why it is the inside diameter that it is, is because I wanted purposely to be able to fit suppressors within the tube itself. So that was kind That's of like a, uh, uh, not only a functional product, but it's kind of a cool factor. I like the yeah, looks of right? it when you got a suppressor going within the can. Yeah, because you yeah, because what you'll have is you just have the suppressor, it's just gonna kind of you know, if you have an SBR, um, it's just gonna be kind of like it's almost like steps down and then there's your can because part of your suppressor is gonna be inside the handguard. Exactly. And of course, of course, it depends if you have a pistol with a suppressor. Well, yeah, that's yeah, depending right. Depending on which where you go, you're kind of that that suppressor could almost be completely covered inside the yes air. yeah exactly so i actually have a uh, five inch micro barrel five five six that i put mm -hmm. my seven inch uh suppressor in so once i have my 12 inch handguard on there the suppressor is only sticking out a couple of inches so it's actually it's really cool looking yeah that and would it's be functional yeah that you see, that's the thing. You you got the cool you go you got the cool factor of looks. You got the cool factor of function. Um, I mean, really, what do you have after that, right? I mean, right. yeah, I'm I'm pretty <laughs> proud of it, man. I, I really do like it. It's uh, so, it's taken me a long time to to develop. I've had multiple prototypes, uh, but this one is the best one yet, especially since it has adjustable latches, because your barrel extension in the factory they do vary in thickness. So with adjustable yes. latches, there's no problem at all. So for everybody in the audience, this is what we're talking about here. Is you just take your barrel in, it'll snap in. You have the latches, and there's set screws here on the side that you can set the the latch. So that way, if your barrel extension, if the if the shoulder of the barrel extension is just a hair thicker. That's no problem. You can just readjust that so that way it fits that barrel. Um, Correct. Because if we think about how ARs are, we'll, we'll look at the at the barrel extension here. This barrel, even this barrel extension, can be. I mean, you can fly, it, even though there's a spec. There's a, there, yeah, there's there's a plus and minus to a spec. So. Correct. You might have, if we have something that's adjustable, now we're clamping this barrel, you know, backwards to the to the actual upper receiver. And we can adjust that tension to what we need it to be. Um, yes. That's awesome. Because, you know, I think about the traditional ways of building an AR upper where I need, you know, I got a toolkit right there from Real Avid where I got, you know, wrenches and stuff like that, where if I've got to change out a barrel, it's going to take me, it's, it's going to take me a little bit of time. Not, and it's not going to take me a long time, but it's definitely not going to be, I mean, for me, I know I say that you can change this in about a minute. I think I'm down to about, man, maybe 35 or 40 seconds. Well, um, I'll tell I'm, you, since I do these at the shows all the time, I can do it in about under 20 seconds. <laughs> so, you know, obviously I get a lot of practice, but it can be done. Very easy. Also, another that, thing that I want to mention, it's actually, uh, it's it's a, another cool factor or more of a mechanical factor. You're not adjusting the latches before you put the barrel on. You actually put yeah. it together and then you tighten the latches up and now you're set. So it's not like any kind of guesswork. All you're doing yeah. is if the barrel is a little bit loose in there, all you do is tighten the screws, tightens everything up, you know? So if it's tight, obviously when you go ahead and check out your, or want to put in another caliber or another barrel, you're just going to go ahead 
And once you loosen it to take the barrel out from the other one, it's already ready for the other barrel to go back in there and then do your final adjustment. So it's uh, it's very easy, very user user friendly. See, and that's the thing is it gives you, you know, we talk about making this as, um, you know, taking the AR to like the ultimate of, um, I don't even know what to say. It's, it's almost like we're taking this thing being a trans, it, it's a transformer now, right? I mean, yes. really. And then from there, you know, for me being, you know, being a gunsmith, I'm looking for things like, you know, I am, I'm working, like I was saying, you know, changing a barrel. I'm there with a torque wrench. I'm torquing a barrel, you know, I'm torquing that t barrel nut. I'm backing it off. I'm torquing, you know, I'll, I'll do that three times when I change a barrel. Or I could just pop a barrel in, close these, and with an Allen wrench, set two, screw two set screws and I'm done. Correct. Barrel's installed. Exactly. And, and just for the people out there, um, I actually wouldn't really call them set screws. I would just call them adjusting screws. Adjusting screws. Yeah. 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 So there's actually nothing, Absolutely. nothing is actually going up against the barrel. All it's doing is adjusting the latches. Well, and I can show everybody where, um, cause you know, of course I'm testing, I test a product. I'm, I've had this thing set where it's so tight trying to put even this particular barrel in there. Um, you can see if I can get the light just right and not blind myself. It you can see where I had it, where where it was. So it yes. is grabbing right up against the shoulder here and Correct. pulling this barrel straight into the receiver. Exactly. And that's and that's and this is going to the extreme of of pushing the product. I mean, you're not going to tighten the barrel this tight. But I was like, what hap What if? Right. Correct. But no, that is. That is the coolest thing in the world is having that. And then if you tinker like me and you want to change your barrel color, you just pull your muzzle device off, pull your gas block off, sandblast, recoat, and <laughs> it yeah. just pop right back into your gun. It's it's awesome. So now you were talking about, you know, this is, you know, you, you've come up to this and you've been working for this for a while. How long have you been, how long have you had to, uh, See if I can speak English today. How, how much time do you have into research and development of this product? Well, I got to tell you, it's a little bit embarrassing, but it's a number of years simply because between prototypes and patents, it's about a two year wait. So yeah. I've had multiple prototypes. So it's actually taken me a long time. I, like I said, I, it's almost embarrassing because. But you're also you're also a one person shop, though. Correct. I mean, it's not, it's not like you have this big machine shop behind that, the Bear City Arms banner there. It's, it's, it's you. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And in all actuality, I, I source all my parts out. I obviously did all the CAD design. So sure. uh, the fantasy is to have my own machines, but as of right yeah. this minute, that's not but a the, factor. But you're you're no different than every other entrepreneur. It's you know is a is a garage entre entrepreneur. You start off, you know, you you get the design, you prototype the design. You have to outsource because, I mean, you know, a Haas CNC machine. You don't have millions of dollars for sitting, you know, to put into a CNC machine. Correct. Um, and this is I can tell everybody from putting one of these together. The um, the barrel retaining system here. Um, that would not be an easy piece of machine uh, of of metal to machine, right? Um, there's no way you're doing this by hand. This has to right. be CNC. Yeah, and these are actually from extrusions, so I had to have extrusions made. I've had to do all. Kind, I mean, it's just it's uh, for anybody that's that's a newbie to any of this. It's uh, it may look like a very simple product, but nothing it's happens anything overnight. <laughs> Yeah. And the old, yeah, uh, I think the joke uh, within all industries is it'll be ready in three weeks. Well, let me <laughs> tell you what, let me tell you what three weeks is. Three weeks is six months. So yeah, it's unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. So it's, it's not, it's not for the faint of heart. It's not for quitters. So. So, well, what made you go into this? I mean, it, the, 
like you said, this has got you've got years of R and D into this thing. Um, I mean, what what got you to just to the point of sitting down, going, you know, I can build a better mousetrap. Right. Okay. So I'll tell you, this is what I tell everybody. And it's funny because when I'm at the gun shows, I see people walking around that have never owned an AR and they're like, Oh, I want to buy one. And they're like, okay, well, you know, I want to buy the $2,000 AR or should I buy the inexpensive AR? So what I always tell them is, well, why don't you do this? And the way it happened for me was I went into a store. I didn't even know that you could buy an AR. There was one on the wall and I was like, hey, can I buy that? And he said, sure. So I was like, whoosh, whipped out the credit card and I was like, give me one of those. Right. So I got it. And this was at the time that uh, the war was starting. So obviously that created all the companies out there to start producing parts. Right. Yeah. So I had the original AR with the plastic hand guards, the whole nine yards. So now everything started coming out and I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. I need that. I want this. I want that. So now here I am. And I'm like, now I'm a gunsmith, right? So yeah. I'm buying all different parts and I'm seeing what's out there. And I'm like, oh, well, this doesn't fit with this. This doesn't do that. So I was like, man, there's, you know, there's got to be something else. And I've, I've gone through so many different, you know, AR handguards, furniture, piston drives, the whole nine yards. And at the time, well, this doesn't fit a piston, this does, this doesn't do this, this doesn't do that. So I was like, man, there's got to be something better. So, you know, I just, uh, my wheels started turning and, uh, you know, I thought about things, but I never really put anything into action until probably, you know, six years ago. So that's when I started. So I had to go out and find people that do CAD work. I had to find people that do extrusions. It was like, it was such a learning process. It's, it's amazing yeah. how much I've learned, but that was really the beginnings of it. And also uh, being a Marine, I've spent hours and hours and hours, if not days at the weapons cleaning table. So I'm like, man, there's <laughs> gotta be a better way to get to all the nooks and crannies in here to be able to clean your rifle easily. So that was another inspiration. And then also thinking tactically at the time, I was thinking, okay, so instead of carrying multiple rifles, right? Or instead of having a long barrel rifle when you need to go do room clearing, right? Close quarters. Small Why don't barrel. you have something to where you can have somebody on overwatch and then you're in the town or whatever it may be now. Hey, everybody, I want you to switch to your short barrels because we're going to do QCB. So that was another inspiration behind it. So that was kind of the, uh, the whole idea. So before we begin, uh, before we, before we begin, before we continue, I want to thank you for your service because I totally forgot that you were in the Marines well, thank you, thank but you I didn't so do much anything. For your service. Yeah, you did. Did, well, did 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 you raise your hand to take the oath? I did, but I'm not a combat veteran, so I I doesn't, don't I don't try matter. to take you, anything away from that. You, no, but you still took you still rose your rose your hand and took the oath. Um, so you deserve thanks. It's well, thank real you. Simple. I appreciate it. Um, now it, it's funny you talk about you know sitting at the cleaning table because well, being a marine, you're a rifleman first. Uh, Correct. whereas I like to say I'm a pistol, I'm a pistol guy who wants to be a rifle, a rifle guy. Um, and I know it's, it's funny cause people are like, like when I was talking earlier about twerking the barrel nut three times, people are like, well, why do you do that? <laughs> and I, I'm like, do I want to give you the long answer or do I want to give you the short answer? And I go, the shorter answer is, is the technical service manual that I learned how to build an AR off of was from the Marine Corps <laughs> and, you and you torque it three times. Right. Because um, right. because those manuals are, are, are public, uh, you know, they're public domain, um, which is great. You, you learn a lot about system, but I mean, that's where people don't think you don't think about in military is you're going to go way deeper into a gun. The, even just cleaning, you're going to go way deeper than the average civilian. Um, Correct. Average civilian is just like, I mean, if it, like I think about it now, um, if, if something's really dirty, I'm just taking it outside with some brake cleaner. 
you right. just write it down, right? You, you guys didn't really have that choice. Right. Well, it's funny because uh, in the service, not just the Marine Corps, I'm sure it's service wide. They'll purposely sit you out there cleaning your weapon for hours and hours and hours and hours just yep. to keep you busy. So uh, obviously when you're in, you're not really thinking, is that the reason why? But when you're out, you do know that's the reason why. So right. uh, at the time, I'm just thinking there's got to be an easier way to try to get this done quicker so I can go do something well, else. Because it's funny you think about you know, when you think about your system. When I did the initial review of it, um, well, to get around some idiosyncrasies of YouTube, um, I took the I took it as being you know a cleaning right because. That barrel extension is one real pain to clean because Absolutely. I've got to go. I've got to go either all the way through the back or somehow come in from the bottom. Through the bottom, or I can pop a barrel off and I got it right there. I can sit here with a with a Q-tip all day long if I want to. Yes, and super I, simple I will tell for you, cleaning. Yeah, super simple for cleaning. I have. Um, actually it's out in the garage going, uh, getting surcoated. I have a, I have a Colt, uh, barrel. It was an A2, it was an A2 barrel. And, uh, you know, I've had that thing since God, the Clintons were in office. So, uh, I'm right. starting to date myself <laughs> oh, a while. Well, that's when I was in the Marine Corps. So it's been a long time. There you go. So I tell you, that is probably, you know, when I pulled that barrel off, um, that's probably the cleanest that barrel has ever been. Because well I'm gonna, I'm gonna it's gonna go through the surcoat process but now I know because um, it's actually getting surcoated for one of these uppers I have with your system on it um, that's it, it, there's nothing like cleaning because now I don't have that receiver even when I'm I'm looking at cleaning this thing I just put this into my real live advice there and now I don't have to worry about banging all the way through that upper receiver I just clamp this thing on. And I'm in and out really quick with cleaning this. Yeah. You know, I don't, very, I don't have to worry easy. about my board guides or any, anything like that. Right. Very so, accessible. So, I mean, if anything, if you want to clean your gun and you're, and you're, and you're really anal about cleaning your gun, um, this is the way to go just for that alone. Um, and then, you know, if you really want to get down to it, Drive a pin out. I can pull the gas tube off, clean the gas tube if I want to. Correct. Um, so, I mean, you talk about going down to the 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 micro detail of cleaning a gun. This is it. Yes, I agree. Plus the ability to change calibers and do it in the field and well, yeah, for you, a, 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah, big plus. Definitely a big plus. Also, I also tell everybody, you know, so... Uh, I've even had comments before like, well, why don't you just buy another upper receiver? Well, my opinion is you can go buy an expensive upper receiver and you can lug that upper receiver out to the range or hunting or whatever you're going to do. Or you can carry one rifle, multiple barrels, less weight. Yeah. Well, it's so funny because I, I did, um, I did, uh, uh, it's out, it's out in the other room, but, uh, you know, I did a, a video on a uh, saver uh, with the saver covert 34, the saver okay. covert 34 an AR doesn't fit in. I mean, you have to separate an AR out for it. And then, um, you know, for that video, it's, it works great for side folders. So if you have a side folder AR, okay, great. Or, you know, I can just have my upper and my lower. And of course, oh, here's, here's one of the lowers. Um, I just circled it. So, you know, I can have my upper and lower with my stock. And uh, yeah, of course, I'm doing this live on the on the on the thing and everything wants to be a pain. But I can just have this with my stock and everything sitting in my saver. And then I can have three barrels. Absolutely. Just, just Velcroed right in and whatever, whatever caliber I want to go with. That's that's it. Absolutely. So that I, you know, I get that. Cause when I first, when we first started talking and I was looking at this thing is I'm like, I was the same way. I was like, you know, 
you could just carry an upper, but then you are starting to add some weight when you start carrying uppers. Correct. You're, you know, really all you need is the barrel. Yes, absolutely. Let's not forget cost also yeah. because upper receivers are costly. Yep. So now instead of buying another upper receiver, you're buying a barrel. Well, and the other thing is, is that now that this is installed, whatever caliber or barrel I want to run with, I just pop it. I just pop again. I just pop it out and and go. Correct. Um, oh, I want to pull this back up. There's, so when we get these kits, really, you get everything you need. I mean, all the way down to the Loctite. You get two Allen wrenches. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm like looking at the bench because there's stuff spread all over here. And then you get the wrench to put the uh, the coupler on onto the front. And for everybody watching this or listening to this, there's a video that I did that is not released um, of how to install this system. It's it's. I have so much time into um, into the video of putting this thing on. Really, this is only it, you know if you have the barrel already off of this upper receiver, we're only talking what, five minutes to install the system. It's not hard. Exactly. Exactly. And that's another thing that these services will teach you. It has to be dummy proof. <laughs> yes. So anybody, yeah. anybody can do it. You don't have to have any kind of mechanical skills. It's just, it's very easy. But no timing issues. It's just basically putting on a coupler, snugging it down, sliding with, the other. With a wrench, with yes. a wrench you give them. <laughs> I mean... And even, yeah, exactly. even the wrench is stout. I mean, this is like I swear I could probably I could probably throw this and kill somebody with it. I mean, it's you might be able to if you sharpen one end up. Is, you gotta throw yeah, it. Yeah, this is this is a good chunk of steel right here. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, and that's the thing is um, and if you've built well, if you've built lowers, one thing I love about how you did this, and yes, I did try it, and no, it didn't work. Uh, um, the coupler looks like a castle nut for the stock. Correct. Looks a lot like a castle nut. Um, and no, it doesn't fit. I tried. Uh, it's it's a completely different thread pattern, a different size. But that's the thing is, if you've built a lower before and you've torqued a, a castle nut, you look at this thing going, "Oh, that's a castle nut. I know what to do with a castle nut. I thread it on." I grab, I grab a wrench, and even then, I don't have to torque. The, that's the thing is, there's no torque wrenches here. Right. It's, I go, I go, and you know, I hand tighten it. I put a wrench onto it, and just go a little bit more, and, and you're done. Because yes, all you, you have, have to do is snug it. Yeah, and because you have some Loctite in there, it's going to hold it. And then the coupler goes on. There's a pinch screw to hold it together as you're as you're assembling everything. And then there's four screws around here that just clamp to the coupler. And again, Correct. like uh, in, in that install video, it's um, actually here's one of your torque or here's one of your uh, Allen wrenches. I'm just tightening this thing and I'm just using one finger. I'm not like cranking on this thing. Right, exactly. Yeah, you don't basically have to. I'm getting it. Yes, exactly. You just have to you just have to set the screws and then snug them. You don't have to torque them at all. The Loctite does the rest. And that's what's great about this system is like, uh, like I said, not only do you get all the tools, but really as long as you can turn a screw and, you know, turn a wrench, you can install the system. It's not hard. Yes, very easily. Um, actually, I got thing here. I mean, here's the, here's the install instructions. I mean, it's not hard. It's what's there? There's eight steps on this. That's it. And that includes putting the handguard on. So yeah. I, I, I love where you went with this and um, it, it, with it being so easy, because I get, you know, I get, I get parts in for guns. Man, it's just like you wonder how. 
I, I like to teach people how to maintain their firearms. That's basically the you know the basis of my of my channel and you know where I started from. But getting a system like this, this is not hard. Um, and it really, you just need some basic mechanical knowledge of turn a screw, put Loctite in. You know, that's it. And yes. five minutes later, you could. Five minutes later, you have something like this. Correct. Very simple. So now you have three handguards, uh, three three sizes, two colors, three sizes. So what uh, we have the, what is it the I'm going to screw this up. I know I'm going to screw this up. It's the 12, right? The 12 inch, yes. The 12, the nine, and then uh, seven. The inch, seven right? inch. Okay. So basically you have pistol maybe pistol with a little longer handguard or a rifle uh, you know or a carbine with a shorter handguard or a carbine with a really short handguard or a carbine with a regular length handguard i mean really you can mix and match this you just order the kit with what length of handguard and what color of handguard you want correct correct so right exactly so the seven inch could be used on a pistol length barrel that has a low profile gas block, or you can use it for a carbine length 16 inch barrel with a big bulky gas block or an A-frame front side post. So See, that would be the one. To... You're the only system that can take that A-frame front, front side post that I've seen. Correct. That's absolutely so, correct. Also, even a big bulky uh, picking any uh, gas block. So that's why I designed it like that. So if you have any one of those uh, barrels with those front sights, the barrel would come out first when you want to change out barrels or calibers. So if you had a low profile gas block, you can take your handguard off first because it slides right over. So basically for everybody on there, I just, I just actually the Colt that's upstairs, I just pulled this thing off. Um, so this is what your 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 A-frame front sight looks like. So this is your gas block. So basically, you're something like this at that point. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and that's what I like about this is that basically whatever you have, whatever you have right now on your rifle, you don't have to buy anything else. Exactly. It works with it. And that, again, that was the idea behind it. I wanted somebody to be able to buy a different handguard system and not have to purchase anything else unless they want to purchase another barrel that's another caliber or another length. Cool. Now, you have two colors, right? Um, Correct. Black and flat dark earth. Yes. Um, so, and the thing that's nice about this, since it's titanium, you, we're not worried about rust either. Right. So you bang this thing around, chip some paint, scratch some paint off. It's okay. <laughs> no big deal. Just keep moving. Right. Exactly. Yes. And they are Cerakoted. Okay. Awesome. I actually All usually right. end up spray painting a lot of my stuff. So it's yeah. very simple to do. Um, I'll be honest with you. This one almost got sandblasted and re -cerakoted. Um just for, for just for another video that I'm doing, um, but sure, yeah, it's it's so cool that you know it, we're we're not talking about anything special, any special materials here. Um, now we've talked about how easy it is to switch this thing over. What about accuracy off of these things? Because now I'm talking about changing a barrel out. How do we how do we maintain accuracy through this thing? Okay. So if you take the barrel that you already have in there and you're zeroed, right? Mm -hmm. If you take that barrel out and you put that barrel back in and tighten it up, you're right back on zero. Now, obviously, if you have to change calibers, right? Yeah, your point of impact is going to change. Yep. Right, it's going to it's going to change. But all you have to do is remember your dope and just change yep. it back and forth. Because that's the thing, like, um, so on this upper, you know, I have a red dot on here. And really, what I did 
is I zeroed the barrel. Okay. You know, for two two three for my, for my actually for this two two three uh, barrel, uh, the three hundred blackout that I have is uh, actually up in the garage getting ready to get circuited. And all I did is I I grabbed the next barrel, put it in, and zeroed out, and I just counted my clicks. Right. And now exactly. I know that if, if I just go back so many clicks, I'm back to this two two three barrel. Right. Exactly. How did it fire for you? Oh, awesome. It was so awesome. Um, and I, sw I swapped back and forth a few times. And um, the only thing I got to say is if you're, if you're swapping like I did, just remember that barrel gets hot. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, it does. It gets, gets a little hot. So uh, you might want to wait for your barrel to cool. Um, I just grabbed it with a glove because I, you know, I'm out filming. I don't have time. So I just like yanked it out with a glove. Um, yeah. But yeah, just the safety part of it is just remember these things get hot. So if you're going to swap a barrel, just make sure your barrel is cool enough to touch. Yeah. Um, I, I carry a glove with me also. So there you go. don't feel bad. Um, I kind of think uh, we have. Um, the piston still, like like you said, the piston, because this is a big enough port for anything to go through it. Um, I'm looking through, it's fine, I'm looking through the backside. Yeah, it's just it's just as big as what's on your receiver. So you're not going to run into compatibility problems. No. I mean, that is, I, I really love this system. I, I, I love being able to swap a barrel out. Um, if for nothing else, uh, I can be I can be lazy at times. Now, so we have this thing for the three colors, and you know I know that you're just you know you're just starting out. It's a very young uh, product. Is there anything in the future that you are looking at, or is this like you're still maybe working at at you know maybe more colors? Any anything else? Right. So colors really isn't a big issue. Um, what I'm actually working on is a couple of different sizes. So we'll have like a uh, four inch for the very yeah. small pistol. We're going to have a five inch handguard and we're also going to offer a 14 inch handguard. See, I would all love the 14 because I like to float all the way out. As right, far as exactly. I and, I, and I get a lot of comments about that. Also, just for a note, once it gets past the 12 inch, I'm actually, I have an insert that goes behind the gas block. So that's actually going to slide. You'll still be able to slide the handguard on, but you're going to have extra stability for the longer handguards. Okay. So you'll have no flex whatsoever at all. And okay. it'll still be, it'll still be free floated because it's not going to touch the walls of the, the handguard but it's going to be awfully close. <laughs> so okay. it's just, just for that was my next really question because the whole I, I lost you. Yeah, because that's why was my question was is that oh, you're there. So yeah, the we wanna, kind of flaked out. Yeah, because you want to. That's the whole idea with a free float is we don't want to interfere with the barrel with our hand. Um, so. That's what I was wondering about with that. You really have that support there for like if it's in a case or anything like that. Correct. Right. And also, like I said, once it gets past a certain length, you know, uh, you're going to have more flex. So basically yeah. that insert is just going to limit that flex by thousands of an inch. So it's just for durability and sturdiness, but it'll still be a free floated system. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, we're going to have, uh, like I said, an, an ad for the three, uh, three different size handguards. Another thing that I want to mention too, is since these handguards are actually a stamping, it's hard to taper down without actually having a machined handguard. Yeah. So I think in the future, we're going to go ahead and have some carbon fiber molds made so that it can taper down in the center and then flare out at the end again so you can still fit your suppressor within the tube itself. So anybody that complains cool. about having a, 
a large outside diameter handguard, now I'm going to be able to satisfy both worlds with that. But that's coming in the future. Yeah, and that's the thing is, is that this is not like one and done. You know, it's like, okay, I've got this, I've got this system. I've got three sizes and two colors. Take your pick. You're already looking at what people, you know, all the feedback that you're getting and what people want to come out with the next thing. Because now if I already, if I buy this with, you know, the, the long handguard, can I just buy another handguard for this gun from you? Can you hear me, Brendan? Yeah, I got you now. There we go. That's that's the, the greatest thing about the internet is it makes things easy, but now well, yeah, it, I know. it can cause problems. Too. So can we get, if we, what I was saying is that if I already have an upper built with your system, can I just get another handguard? Yes, you can. Those will so be available I, for you to purchase. Cool. So if I have the, you know, if I have the long one now, I, all of a sudden, you know, I have a shorter barrel and I want to run the shorter one. I can just buy another handguard. And I'll have to, and that's the, the thing is, is this thing slides on. Um, and I know I don't have a, you know, I don't have a barrel in here. You loosen the bottom screw. I mean, this thing just pops right on. We tighten the screw. I mean, it's to change this out is even faster than changing the barrel. Yes, absolutely. Hey, one other thing I want to mention too, because we were talking about comments. So one of my number one comments is, do you make this for the AR-10? And what I always tell them is... I, it's funny because I asked you the same thing. <laughs> right. So that is the next project that I'm working on. We're going to make it for the AR-10, without a doubt. Now, if you had a small frame AR-10, you could actually use this product on that now. But I don't know how available the barrels are at a yeah. uh, at cost. I think right. right now the barrels would probably be pretty expensive. But I think once it becomes more mainstream, they'll be available at a at a very feasible rate. But I am going to be making these for the AR-10, so everybody knows. Cool, because because that was when we first started talking. That was like one of the first things out of my mouth was great. What about the AR-10? And it's great to hear that you're working on AR-10, especially with the changeover between, um, you know, people mm -hmm. wanting to go from 308 to 65 Creedmoor, because all right. that is is a barrel swap, just like right. just like 223 to 300 Blackout is a, is a barrel swap. You have the 65 and the and the 308, right? Because um, you know, I'm looking over there. I've got a couple of 308 uppers just sitting there. I mean. That would be really great if I could swap that barrel out right. like this. So one of the problems with the AR-10 and one of the reasons why I didn't come out with it at the same time is because the AR-10 is not standardized yet. So if yes. I if I make the wrong choice, that could be a big financial disaster for myself. So along with that thought, I was talking to uh, some people about that. So in all actuality, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a one piece upper receiver that will be the standard for the quick change barrel system. So I'm thinking okay. about doing that route or I might take a gamble and choose which AR-10 I think is the most common. So it's going to be out there. It's just going to be probably about a year or so, but I will. Have it's to. funny. It's funny because right before we jumped on the podcast, I was taking a survey from um, a gun company who is looking at coming out with one of their products, which is a 50 caliber in an AR-10 platform. And they were asking for comments. And, and I was talking about the lack of standardization. You know, unlike the AR-15, the AR-10 standards are pretty fast and loose. Right. And then it's, and then it's like, well, and then it comes down to pattern. Is it going to be, a, are you going to do this as a DPMS pattern? Are you going to do this as an arm light pattern? Are you going to do it as both? You know, how they're, Correct. AR-10s are, I, I love them, but it, it's like every time you build one, it's, each one's a little bit different from manufacturer to manufacturer. Right, exactly. And I just don't want to make that mistake in choosing the wrong one. 
So yeah, that, that's like it's it's kind of, it's funny because in, in not not as bad, but kind of the AR10 is almost like a 1911. You know, a Glock you assemble, and a 1911 you build. <laughs> it's it's right. It's almost the same thing with the AR10s. It's like okay, I got I got make I got to make some decisions, and I got I might have some fitting here, and yeah. No, I, I get it. I totally get it. So we've been rolling about 50 minutes now. Um, I just will kind of let you, let you, you know, tell everybody how do we get in touch with Bear City Arms? I mean, you got the banner back there, but everybody on the audio side, I'm going to have the links down below. So Brandon, how did they get a hold of you? BearCityArms.com. Very simple. Type that in or you'll get our website. Um, we're a little lacking on some of our videos, but we're working on that, especially with you. And, yeah, uh, I got, you know, I've got, uh, I got the build video coming. Here in the new, yeah. yeah. And I think here in the new future, the near future, we're going to have a lot more videos of myself and my son and some other people going out and shooting. So, uh, any questions that they might have, they'll be able to look at the videos and I'm going to try to answer them for you just by watching. So now. Uh, Your son's also in the, in the near military, future, correct? But yeah, he's a Marine right now. He's he's an air winger, but uh, he's uh, he's going to be involved in this. It's just uh, it's just a matter of getting things up and going so that he can get further involved with it. Sure, because because you have so videos it's going to be a family affair. Awesome, I love hearing Say that. that again. Because you have. I love seeing that because, you know, getting, you know, family involved in the company, it, it's just awesome to see everything coming over and seeing passions being shared uh, because, you know, I've seen your yeah, videos out for, there. Cause you, sure. you that, guys, that's, that's the drill. All right. I got, I got you now. There, there we go. <laughs> the, okay. the moderns of the modern. Well, you being in Montana and me being in Florida, that's quite a distance. Yeah. And, and, uh, if you think about it, my internet here, I'm on Starlink. Uh, so I'm beaming up to a satellite and back to Earth. Uh, right, it's amazing. Right. It's amazing all this stuff works, right? Oh, man. Crazy. <laughs> so uh, what I was saying is it's kind of great to see families come together and take a passion and move it forward. Definitely. that's That's been a dream of mine for quite some time. So I'm looking forward to that all coming to fruition. And, uh, and, you know, you do have a YouTube channel. Um, I've watched the, some of the videos of your YouTube and your Instagram. We'll make sure those links are down below because there's videos of both you and your son just kind of yanking a barrel out, putting it back in and shooting it. I, I think your son was doing the accuracy of, of the shooting system, wasn't it? Yes, he was. Yes, that was one video. Again, we have to work on our videos for sure. They're a little bit lacking, but I, I will get on that and, right. and make them better for start sure. It's a startup. You it's have start. you have yeah, it's a start. You you have so many things going on right now that uh yeah, so, something's gonna give somewhere, right? Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, my main so, gig is swinging a hammer every day of the week. So this is a side gig until until things take off, but I do believe they're gonna take off for sure. So that's the whole thing is people don't understand. Like even me as a content creator, I have a day job. Uh, yeah. so I've, I've got to pay the bills too, because being content creator is a poor business. Yeah. Um, but, but that's, you know, everybody's trying to get things going and this is just what makes entrepreneurship in the United States, the greatest thing out there. Yes, I agree for sure. You got to have a dream. That's right. That's right. That's what keeps us going. So now I just want to loosen up a little bit here at the end. We do a speed round. So okay. I'm going to give you. Four, this or that questions, and they're all going to be about firearms or ammunitions or accessories or you know, something gun related. And then one thinking question. Okay. And everybody in the audience knows the thinking question. So they're probably sitting there going, huh, yeah, we know we know what he's in store for. So for pistol, nine millimeter or 45? 45. 45. <laughs> awesome. I love it. For sure. For, for hearing protection, earplugs or earmuffs? I would have to say earmuffs, but this is going to sound crazy. 
I actually feel like I'm more accurate with no hearing protection at all. That may wow. be crazy. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's just always been that way for me, but I do use hearing protection. And when I do, I well, use it, my. It could be a, it could be a comfort thing. Cause the one thing I have with earmuffs is usually like, like, you know, clamp to your head. And after a while, especially wearing glasses, you know, it gets uncomfortable. And sometimes right. earplugs just, especially like a hot day, your ears start sweating and just like, yeah, the, the comfort factor is just kind of drives yeah. me nuts. Especially here in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Especially it's there in Florida. You guys, in Florida. Yeah. I see. We don't, that's the one thing we don't have up here is we don't have the humidity that you guys have. Um, right. We have cold. We have cold. Uh, um, oh, yeah. I know that. But yeah, like this, uh, we're going right now, we're going, I think it's like uh, seven days where our high is still in the negatives. This is going to be the warmest. Today is going to be the warmest day in seven days with oh, a high man. of negative two. I don't know that I've <laughs> ever seen negative. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. Uh, we had one week, one week. Uh, it was in 2002, wow. like Christmas week of 2002. That's like, that's where, insane. I couldn't even imagine. Yeah, our, yeah, our high was like uh, negative, negative 20 was our high for the week. Um, that's when I went out and tested a bunch of gun oils. Like, let's see which one freezes. Um, so let's see here. We did, uh, I'm trying to remember. That was, uh, that was question two, right? Um, we got talking. How about so for rifle 308 or 223? Oh, you're back again. So, okay, so for back. rifle, there we go. For rifle 308 or 223? I have to say, I like 223. But 308 definitely has a much bigger punch and reach gotcha. out ability. So, so how about um, I like the recoil pump? of the 223. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, I do too. It's uh, but I also like I do like my 300, uh, my 308s so. though. It's just, it's just something about shooting a 308, just got yeah. you know, that, that deeper that deeper muzzle recoil, you know, that deeper sound and yeah. Yeah. So a lot pump more action. ass behind it. Yeah. A lot more. So pump action or lever oh. action. Pump. Ooh. Okay. I, I like <laughs> lever action. Yeah. I, you know, it, it's one I've of those things. I've always liked lever actions. I've liked lever action since I was little watching John Wayne movies. Just it's just a classic. And my exactly. first was rifle was yeah. My first rifle was a uh was a Winchester 94, still have it, you know, from when I was a kid. Um just there's just something about that lever action, just it, it's just cool, you know. It's just it's like an American classic. So for your thinking question. I'm going to take you to the world's largest armory. And in this armory is one of anything that has ever thrown a projectile. And it's been cleared by every possible government agency that you get to have one of anything in this armory. What are you walking off with? Now, I'm legally allowed to own it. No problem whatsoever at all. Every every possible government agency has said, "Yep, you can have this." I can have it. Yep. I think I might go with the M134. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's a, that that's one. A, that's uh, a respectable decision. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a crowd pleaser. I think that yeah, would be. Yeah, it uh, is right. Yeah, I think you could fend off whoever you need to fend off. With no problems whatsoever yeah. at all, and depending and depending on who's watching the show, if if you know if you're as old as old as the two of us, um, go back to the movie Predator, right? <laughs> right, right. 
that's that's the first time I've ever saw a minigun, and that's what <laughs> that's what that's where my yeah, that's, hey, that's what from. that's what did it for me too. It's that I think I'll have to uh, bulk up to be able to carry that. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, well, it was being it was being carried by Jesse Ventura, so he did have a have a few muscles to him. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know, I like all awesome. kinds of firearms. I like uh, I like firearms because they're uh, they're powered by a self contained case. So it, yeah, it's, instead of having to worry about like uh, you know cars where there's so many different moving parts there's so many different uh uh you know chips computer chips and so on and so forth i just like firearms because it just they're just very simple so yeah. it's uh well, it's always be it's always think? been interesting to me ever since i owned my you first bb about, gun you think about it a, a, a cartridge for a gun is a mini self-contained internal combustion engine Exactly. Yeah. So all you have to do is figure out how to fire that and repeat it and, off go. and do it fast yep. with some accuracy. There you go. So awesome. Well, Brendan, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to uh to talk to us about your system because this is a really cool um this is a really cool idea you have, and I'm looking forward to seeing this go more mainstream. Yes, me too. Me too. Me too. Absolutely. Well, you guys have a great evening because I know your wife is right back there. She's the one that's trying to keep everything running. and she, She's right. keeping all the little electrical bits running back and forth so that Brandon can talk to us on the, on the podcast. And thank your wife for us for uh, for keeping this all, all going today. I will. Hey, I'll see you at the SHOT Show. Sounds great. Looking forward to it. Okay, perfect. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. One of the things I love about doing this podcast is getting people like Brandon on. I love getting creators on where we can talk about a product and how it came to be because we don't think about what they were trying to solve originally. You know, we buy a product and there's a lot of thought that goes into a product, but we just miss that story. And I love hearing the story, the journey of getting a product to market. Now, this thing is really cool. Trust me, I have two uppers on this thing. Uh, I've got three hand guards. It's, it's awesome. It really is awesome. I love to see where this product goes in the future. It's super cool. I have a link down below. Go check out Bear City Arms. Now, if you like the work that I do here, please consider supporting me for free by shopping my affiliate links and banners at www.trb.fyi. Go to Partners and Discounts, and you just click the link right in there. Like if you're going to go to Brownells, click that link, and everything you buy there, small portion of it will come back to the channel. It's not going to cost you one penny more than you are already going to spend. It's right. You can support the channel for free. Now, there are some companies out there I have discount codes for, like Falco or even Real Avid. I can save you money while you're supporting the channel for free. So definitely go check that out. Now, for the product of the podcast, I love right here as I bang them around on my bench here. I love this product from Real Avid. Um, the more I use it, the more I love it. And this is the smartest system. Um, it clicks into my vice there. Um, you can click it into the uh, master gun workstation. This is the cell phone holder. So that way, hey, you're putting your AR back together or taking it apart or whatever. Click this in, watch one of my videos. I'll walk you right through it using one of my videos. Uh, it also comes with a really powerful magnifying glass. As I break it, it's not broken, but it did take a good fall. And look at that. I mean, <laughs> tell me, would anything else really take that fall? But anyways, this thing is super cool. I love the magnifying glass. And it's weird to say this. Probably my favorite accessory is the flashlight. Um, look at this thing. It's magnetic. You have... Two settings there, and then you can go straight on. 
and uh, it's got a clip. This thing is super cool. I mean, I'm using this thing for, well, more than just guns. Um, I was telling my wife just yesterday, I wish they sold the flashlight, just the flashlight alone. So go check it out. These things are super cool. Great product from Real Avid. You're not going to want to miss this one. I have a link down below. And if you use the affiliate code or the checkout code RARB24, RARB24, you will save 10% on your order. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, click that video right there. That video is about the journey about this Falco holster. It's not your typical holster review. For everybody else, there's a link down below. Thanks for listening. Hope you're staying safe out there and look forward to talking to you again soon.